Welcome to Naresh I Technologies. Uh, this is Ram Chandar. In the last video, I did talk about how many ways can we load dot class file from secondary memory to primary memory. I am highlighting totally seven ways. The first one is Java development tool and other development tools. Other development tools here nothing but Java C, Java W, Java P. And as well as I did highlight about uh, to call other class static variables and static methods also we can load dot class file that is the second way. And the third one is object creation to create other class object in our class automatically other class is also other class dot class file is also going to be loaded. And next one is I did highlighting like uh, I did not highlight now I am going to be highlighting that is what uh, reflection API. In the last video I did talk about these three things first three things I did talk. Now, in this video I am going to be talk about uh, by using reflection API. Now, here uh, let me give a few details related to reflection API. API stands for application programming interface. What exactly it contains? It contains collection of classes and interfaces. API it stands API is contains collection of classes and interfaces and enum as well as annotations also annotations. With the help of all these uh, classes and interfaces and enum and annotation we are highlighting some operations with the help of all these predefined functionalities we can able to do some operations. Now, Observe here we in the market we have different types of APIs. For example, I need to communicating with the database. We required OJDBC, OJDBC was 14.jar or 6.jar we have. Now, if you want to developing web applications, we we required a servlet iPhone API, servlet iPhone API. Here OJDBC jar means here JDBC API. So, with the help of the JDBC API, we can able to develop database applications. With the help of servlet API, we can develop web application. In the same manner, with the help of reflection API, we can able to develop uh, reflection oriented operations. What are those? Reflection oriented operations. What is the meaning of reflection oriented operations? Very simple. Now, Observe here, let me take one more point and here I am elaborating about uh, reflection operation. Very simple, here I am writing one uh, small uh, Java source code. Now, for writing Java source code, I am taking one small uh, Java file that is Java file is what here uh, a dot Java. Now, after that what I am doing, I am compiling this program. Once we compiling this program, how can we compile the program Java C A dot uh, Java. Once we compiling the program, we are uh, getting uh, what uh, byte code, we are getting byte code. So, byte code is available in one more uh, file, that file is nothing but A dot class file. So, with the help of the compiler, we can able to converting from source code to byte code. So, what is the meaning of reflection? A reflection again if you are converting from the byte code to search code that operations we can call as reflection that means from the source code first we are getting byte code from the byte code again if you are getting the source code that is comes under uh, reflection so already to develop the reflection we have one command like java p and also we have some uh, reflection api concept so, if you want to develop the reflection API concept, uh, mainly we required one method that method is for name method, that method name is for name method. Now, basically for name method, for name method is one static factory method, it is always loading byte code of a particular class. Okay. Now, object here static factory method where exactly this uh, for name method is available means java dot lang dot java dot lang dot one predefined class that is what here class 
within the java.lang.class dot dot class we have one method that is for name method this for name method having one argument string argument now here string argument always requires string argument always requires here class name now here let me write entire uh, total sentence java dot java dot lang dot class cls equal to java dot lang dot class dot uh, for name class dot for name here i am writing like uh, oracle dot jdbc dot driver dot and uh, oracle driver if you are writing like this if i am writing like this what happen automatically for name method will loads uh, oracle driver dot class file from the secondary memory to primary memory oracle driver dot class file will loading by the for name method now observe here here oracle driver dot class file contains what uh, byte code this is byte code so for name method will loads one particular class byte code with the help of that byte code for name method will create for name method will create one java dot lang dot class reference variable now this class reference variable contains byte code that byte code related to which class oracle driver class byte code now with the help of the for name method we can load oracle driver class byte code after loading that byte code it will be placed into various class reference variable still the class reference variable is pointing to what type of byte code oracle driver class byte code now whether the for name method is loading the oracle driver class byte code or not let me highlighting all this theoretical concept through programming manner very simple here uh, let me take one class already i have a class like uh, let me delete all this class now let me take one notepad in the notepad i am taking one class like a uh, demo in the demo class let me take only one block so already you guys know this whenever class is loading from secondary memory to primary memory all the static blocks are going to be loading at only one time now here uh, demo sb demo static block demo static block now i'm going to be save this file on top of the desktop what is that demo dot java demo dot java all files save as type is all files and finally i saved on the desktop now one more one more uh, notepad i'm taking the notepad is abjai here class let me taking class name like what here a loading in the loading uh, i am taking one uh, static method that is uh, public static void main which contains string array r and after that here i am writing like class dot it is available in the class is available in uh, java dot lang so by default the compiler can ab able to understand the location of the class so here class dot for name method e writing only here i'm writing only demo now let me save this file so loading loading dot uh, java already existed loading dot java but still uh, save yes it will asking to replace it okay now object here i'm going to be compile so whenever we working with the for name method first uh, for name method always concentrate on demo dot class file not concentrate on a demo dot dot java file so first what should we do we need to open command prompt go to desktop and uh, let me maximize it yeah now java c java c demo dot uh, java successfully i compiled now i'm getting the dot class file yes this is our dot class file demo dot class file and after that uh, i'm compile the program which program loading dot uh, java now it will giving it will giving one exception uh, by intentionally i'm not writing throws keyword by showing uh, this information only i'm not highlighting in my program what is this unreported exception class not found exception that means so let me write here yes 
class not found exception let me save again. So, here C N F E must and should be capital letter belongs to Java dot lang package only known about uh, package details. Now, again I am writing like Java C loading dot Java yes now compile successfully. Now, here for name method is throwing one uh, uh, compile time exception when we need to handle if you are not handling then we need to forward that exception to home here JVM with the help of uh, throws keyword. Now, let me let me uh, execute this program Java loading. Now, I am getting one output like a demo SB. See observe here I am not writing any print statement in the main method of loading class, but I am getting the output like, but I am getting the output like what uh, demo SB. So, where exactly did I write this demo SB? Very simple guys, I am writing this demo SB within the demo dot uh, Java file. So, here if I am writing like a class dot for name of demo, for name method itself loading demo dot class file from secondary memory to primary memory automatically demo dot class file is going to be loading and initialized and executed. So, this is the fourth way, this is the what here fourth way to loading the dot class file. So, up to now, up to now I am loading so, what is that uh, by using the Java development tool after that what calling the static variables and methods after that by using object creation and one more method like what here for name method that is comes under reflection API. Here I am not highlighting more and more thing related to reflection API just uh, my intention is how uh, to load dot class file by using what for name method. And next one next one is what uh, class name dot class next one is what class name dot class. Now, here I am deleting all this stuff simply yes this is I am deleting yes here I am writing like uh, home deleted here I am writing simply demo demo dot uh, class directly I am using demo dot class demo dot class contains what uh, byte code. Now, this byte code I am placing into one super class like a uh, CLS. Java dot lang dot class is the super class for holding the all the byte code. Java dot lang dot class is the super class to hold all the type of byte code may be demo may be a may be b may be c whatever the byte code if you want to place it into the class we can place. Now, let me compile and execute this program again. Now, observe Java C loading dot Java uh, we are getting some exception what is that uh, some small uh, typing mistake. Yes, uh, let me save it very good. Now, let me compile again Java C loading dot Java. So, here again one small mistake related to I did not mention the variable name. So, string s yes. now uh, let me clean the uh, command prompt now I am getting what successfully compilation and after that uh, I am writing like uh, Java loading. Now, still guys observe demo dot class is uh, placed into variable CLS demo dot class is placing into variable CLS. Now, let me know whether the this demo dot class is loading or not. So, simply what I am writing system dot uh, out dot uh, println whether this class is loading or not CLS dot get name. Let me check the byte code type. Let me check the byte code type here Java C loading dot Java. Now, here variable uh, out field here Java C loading dot Java yes Java loading. Now, here I am getting what here demo. See guys if the demo dot class file is not loading how it will showing like uh, that byte code type is demo not showing. So, here internally what happened demo dot byte code demo dot class uh, nothing but here byte code will be byte code will be loaded into variable CLS after that we can able to check uh, what type of code is loading by the JVM. So, this is the another way of loading the dot class file. In the next video I am going to be talk about uh, how to load dot class file by using the inheritance as well as deserialization. I hope you enjoyed these two types of uh, loading phases and again in the next video we are going to be concentrate more and more on related to inheritance as well as deserialization. Thank you.